Donald Trump, a man whose presidential library could conceivably exhibit a Razzie Award. Seriously, he won a Razzie in 1991 for his supporting role in the film Ghosts Can't Do It as a businessman negotiating with Bo Derek. In this room, there are knives sharp enough to cut you to the bone and hearts cold enough to eat yours as hors d'oeuvres. You're too pretty to be bad. You notice. Kissy face is the single most disgusting thing that's ever been in a movie, and I'm very much including the human centipede. <laughs> but look, we're not going to talk about Trump's movie career tonight. Instead, we want to focus on the two-year anniversary of one of his signature campaign promises. We are going to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. It's time to drain the swamp of corruption. Drain the swamp. Look at that sign. Drain the swamp. We're going to drain the swamp of Washington. We're going to have fun doing it. We're all doing it together. Wait, we're going to have fun doing it and we're all doing it together. Sounds less like a campaign promise and more like a nervous host rambling through the introduction of their first ever orgy. So we're going to have fun doing it and we're all doing it together. And thanks for the hummus spread, Tom. Oh, shit, we said no names, didn't we? Uh, Dominic, 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 everybody fuck now. Mind the coffee table. <laughs> And look, look, limiting the power of industry lobbyists and special interests is a genuinely good idea. And while I would love to give him credit, the odds are, if your whole political platform is just screaming random three-word phrases, one of them is going to bound to end up being good. Lock her up? No. Build the wall? No. All dog zoo? Stop. That's actually a great idea. <laughs> it took a while, but you finally threw out a good one. And while Trump by no means came up with that phrase, it clearly caught on after he won, because other candidates began using it, and perhaps not more memorably or literally than this guy. I'm Bob Gray, an outsider and a businessman. I'm running to fuel the economy, choke off wasteful spending, and secure our nation. But most importantly, I promise to drain the swamp. I'm Bob Gray, conservative Republican, and I approve this message. Right. Except you're not really draining the swamp so much as you are moving it a couple of feet off camera. <laughs> and, and scooch the swamp just doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? But as, as much as people have taken to Trump's drain the swamp promise, it won't remotely surprise you to know that he has not drained the swamp even one little bit. His cabinet has included many swamp creatures from these two Goldman Sachs veterans working on tax policy, <laughs> Gary Cohn and certified handful of man candy, Steve Mnuchin. <laughs> to Wilbur Ross, Commerce Secretary, wealthy corporate raider and living worst-case scenario of what can happen when Wallace Shawn is not stored at the proper temperature. <laughs> now, Trump... Trump has a laughable number of wealthy businessmen presiding over policies that could directly benefit themselves and their former employers. And incredibly, despite Drain the Swamp being one of Trump's greatest hits at his rallies, many of his supporters do not seem troubled by this. The swamp is horrible. And Trump is there, he's there for the small guy. He's there for people like myself. Though his cabinet is filled with multimillionaires. I love that. They're not politicians. And you don't see them as part of the swamp who have not capitalized on the system. In, 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 in a capitalist system, you're allowed to make money. Being rich is good. Yeah, so then what is the swamp? The like? swamp for me... The mainstream. Is, 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 yes, you almost nailed it. It's the mainstream. It's the elites that look down on a small guy like myself. OK, first, if you're mainstream, you can't be elite. By definition, elites are a select group superior to the mainstream. Those terms are mutually exclusive. Digging into this logical fallacy makes me sound like an elitist arsehole. It does not make me sound like a mainstream arsehole. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> But second, second, and perhaps most importantly, the narrow question of self-enrichment is only part of why the swamp is a problem. A much bigger issue is the harm that, can, that it can actually do, and that is what our story is about tonight. Because real damage is being done to the small guy by this administration's actions. Take payday lending. As we've discussed on this show before, people's lives can be destroyed by misleadingly marketed high-interest loans. But the new acting head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Mick Mulvaney, has been actively working with the payday loan industry to block rules reining them in. Why would he do that? I don't know. What I do know is that, as a congressman, he got $60,000 in campaign contributions from payday lending interests. And, earlier this year, he told a room full of bankers this amusing anecdote. We had a hierarchy in my office in Congress. If you're a lobbyist who never gave us money, I didn't talk to you. If you're a lobbyist who gave us money, 
I might talk to you. Now, now, he did say he would always talk to constituents, whether they gave him money or not. But the fact, Molly, he's admitting that as a lobbyist, money might get you a meeting. You don't often hear that from a politician. Yeah, you actually don't. I mean, it's something that everyone naturally assumes, but it is weird to hear it out loud. It's like a Disney World park attendant saying, hey, kids, who wants to have their photo taken with a 30-year-old theatre major who couldn't hack it in the industry and who now wears a full-body mouse suit? I mean, there's no new information there, but it is still unpleasant to listen to. But just focusing on the famous alligators in Trump's swamp is missing some of the most important damage that is getting done by lesser-known bureaucrats. And to illustrate that, let's look at two agencies tonight. First, the EPA. Now, for a year, it was run by Scott Pruitt, who became a household name for doing things like spending $40,000 on a soundproof booth in his office, trying to get the CEO of Chick-fil-A to give his wife a franchise, and demanding an expensive 24-7 security detail, then making it drive him around town to see which Ritz-Carlton had the lotion he liked. <laughs> Which is simply insane, because everyone knows the best lotion comes from La Quinta Inn. That's right. <laughs> if you want to masturbate with hotel lotion, choose La Quinta. <laughs> it's like their slogan says, La Quinta has the lotion that will help you jizz. <laughs> now, once, once Pruitt left, there were not as many flashy headlines about the EPA, but that itself is actually dangerous, because he was not an isolated case. Nearly half of the political appointees hired by Trump at the EPA have strong industry ties, and the guy who replaced Pruitt is not much of an improvement. The man tapped to be Pruitt's replacement? Andrew Wheeler. A man who Forbes says earned more than $700,000 in recent years as, wait for it, a coal lobbyist. Yeah. At this point, though, CNN, you really don't need to ask the American people to wait for it. <laughs> Surprise is just one more emotion that Trump has completely destroyed, along with joy, wonder, and the ability to see someone wearing a red hat from behind without mentally saying, God damn it. <laughs> now, now as, as a coal lobbyist, Wheeler pushed hard to roll back environmental regulations impacting the industry. In fact, here he is as a lobbyist, meeting with Rick Perry, doing exactly that. And little over a year later, he is running the EPA and dismantling the very regulations he lobbies against, which is ridiculous. It's like handing your city's waste management over to a seagull. So let me get this straight. <laughs> the new strategy is we just throw our trash everywhere and leave it strewn around, and we should have more French fries in our garbage. <laughs> How the fuck are you in charge? <laughs> but, but Wheeler, Wheeler is actually... A really good example of how, once Trump's swamp starts seeping in, it can filter all the way down an organisation. And for just how deep it can go, simply look at the Department of the Interior. On this show, we've lavished quite a bit of attention on Trump's appointee to head them, Ryan Zinke, which is understandable. He rode a horse to work on his first day at the department. <laughs> he swung Karen Pence around like a bag of potatoes. <laughs> and despite the fact that he is very much not a geologist, he has a weird habit of doing this. That's the question they ask. And I'm a geologist. 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 <laughs> He's not a geologist <laughs> at all. Besides, bragging about being a geologist is a very weird boast. It's just behind walking around saying, I own crackers. Saltines, Cheez-Its, you name it, I own it. Not oyster crackers, of course. Who am I, Bill Gates? <laughs> Zinke has also taken 66 personal days in his first year and a half on the job and has been the subject of no less than 15 investigations. And reportedly, he may actually be gone any day now. But even if that happens, serious problems will remain because the swamp runs deep. Interior is a massive department and there is real power at every level. I'll show you. Look at this organisational chart. Uh, below Zinke... Uh, and the Deputy Secretary, and the Assistant Secretary for Land and Minerals Management, you will find a very important subdivision called the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, or BESI, which is in charge of safety on offshore oil rigs. And I don't know what you're thinking. Safety on offshore oil rigs? Wouldn't regulatory oversight of any resource development on the Outer Continental Shelf fall under the jurisdiction of the Minerals Management Service? <laughs> Would, wouldn't that be where the responsibility lies, John? To which I say, congratulations on being a sex god. <laughs> and you know what? You're right. You're right. The Minerals Management Service actually used to be in charge of safety until 2010, when there was that catastrophe at Deepwater Horizon. This is the video BP did not want the world to see. A toxic blend of oil and gas spewing from its broken well at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. 
Yes, the Deepwater Horizon famously pumped over 130 million gallons of oil into the Gulf of Mexico, about 12 times the size of the Exxon Valdez spill, costing the region billions and badly hurting the fishing and tourism industries. And you know, you know it was a disaster because Mark Wahlberg made a movie about it. <laughs> and he usually chooses to star in films about the most absolutely appalling things, stuff like tragic shipwrecks, acts of terrorism, and Mel Gibson's seamless reintegration into Hollywood. <laughs> and, and years, years after Deepwater Horizon, the region was still feeling the effects. When the little boats fish in this area right here, half of what they catch is deformed. Really? Yeah, half? Half, yeah. And, and what kind of deformities? They got tumors on the head, little bumps off the side. It's all in the gills where they yeah. breathe at. You see it all in there? Yeah. So that's oil in its gills. Yeah. If you take this shell off, you could pull the oil out, you could smell it. Yeah, that's horrible. Not only did that spill devastate an economy, it somehow actually managed to make shrimp even more disgusting. <laughs> and I hate shrimp. They are slimy, armoured alien bugs for whom proper preparation involves pulling out their shit's bane. <laughs> there is not enough cocktail sauce in the world to erase the memory of a shit vein, and yet, <laughs> somehow, that oil spill made them even grosser. Now, now, before Deepwater Horizon, the Minerals Management Service was in charge of both safety on oil rigs and collecting revenues from oil companies, which was clearly a bad idea because it was an obvious conflict of interest. So, after Deepwater, they created Bessie, an agency whose only job is to keep people and the environment safe. That is their sole responsibility. Promotion of drilling in the Gulf, that is someone else's job. Bessie's is safety, that is all they do. That is probably why its last two heads were a former Coast Guard officer specialising in marine safety and a former Coast Guard officer specialising in marine safety. <laughs> However, Trump has taken a different path, appointing Scott Angel, former Lieutenant Governor of Louisiana, and a guy who is aggressively pro-drilling. For a sense of just how aggressive he is, just days after the Deepwater Well was capped, Angel was at a rally organised by the Louisiana Oil and Gas Association where he called for an immediate resumption of deep-sea drilling, saying this. Enough is enough, and it's time to quit punishing innocent American workers to achieve some unrealistic political agenda. While we, too, support the use of renewable and alternative energy, let's keep the conversation real. America is not yet ready to get all of its fuel from the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. Hold on, hold on. America is not yet ready to get fuel from trees. You mean wood. <laughs> Scientists have understood how wood works for years now, maybe even decades. <laughs> but after serving as Lieutenant Governor, Angel joined the board of Sunoco Logistics Partners, an oil pipeline company earning nearly a million dollars, and now he's regulating the oil industry. And if there is any doubt about his priorities, which there is not, just wait until you see something we found on YouTube. Because last year, Angel gave a presentation at an oil industry conference where he was flanked by two men, one in a hard hat, both of whom were eating during a significant portion of his speech. <laughs> but that, that is not the important part. The incredible moment <laughs> is when he makes it painfully clear exactly how accessible he, the man in charge of enforcing safety, remember, is willing to be to industry leaders. My cell number is... <laughs> For anybody that wants to... Give me a call to talk about it. My cell number is 571-585-3730. 571-585-3730. I'd rather you call me. Everything you text to me is a public record, so be careful. This is a business uh, opportunity for you to engage with me on what you believe uh, we ought to be about. Holy shit! He just gave out his work cell phone number and encouraged oil bosses to call him on it as a business opportunity. That is outrageous for two reasons. First, because he's doing that to avoid the public record. And second, no one should ever call rather than text. I don't care what the scenario is. If you prefer calling to texting, you're a fucking psychopath and you should be put in prison forever. You text, you text, whatever the situation. And, and that is his real number. We know because we called it. <laughs> And apparently, he gives it out publicly to executives all the time. At another industry conference, he even announced it from a stage. And 
Who knows what those executives tell him? It's not part of the public record. But by sheer coincidence, he's urged the White House to loosen safety requirements implemented in the wake of Deepwater Horizon, which they are now planning to do, and which is estimated could save oil companies nearly a billion dollars over the next decade which is the most shocking 10-digit number I've heard since 571-585-3730. So it seems pretty clear at this point that Trump has in no way drained the swamp. What he has done is drained the phrase of its original meaning. And in fairness to him, he was pretty transparent from the beginning about how little he meant it. This is him just one month after his election, essentially telling everyone to their faces that the phrase was meaningless. Funny how that term caught on, isn't it? I, told, I tell everyone, I hated it! Somebody said, drain the swamp. I said, oh, that's so hokey. That is so terrible. I said, all right, I'll try it. So like a month ago, I said, drain the swamp. Place went crazy. I said, whoa, watch this. Then I said it again. Then I started saying it like I meant it, right? And then I said it, I started loving it. And the place loved it. It's drain the swamp. I mean, it's true. It's true. It's true. It isn't. It isn't. It isn't. Trump never meant drain the swamp. And you can tell that by what has happened since. Because he promised to clean up DC, and instead, the guy in charge of the CFPB is holding hands with loan sharks, the EPA might as well be run by a sentient piece of coal, and his head of oil rig safety wants the industry to blow up his digits like an under-regulated oil well. All in all, it seems like if there is anyone remaining who is still hoping that Trump might drain the swamp. You can now officially kissy-face that idea goodbye. <laughs>